Ah, things that go bump in the night. Doesn't matter how old you are or how wise you get, they can still scare the life out of you. How about scratches in the night? Would they be even worse? Well, tell me what you think after you've listened to today's story. Because those scratching sounds can drive you crazy. Well, my dear friends, if you can just about hear me above the sound of the thunderstorm outside, I have to ask you one question. Do you know what time it is? That's right. It's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. I turned my head to the far right corner of the living room, towards where I'd heard the sound. I then turned to my wife sitting on the couch to my left. She returned my puzzled look and then asked me, Did you hear something? I replied, Yeah, it kind of sounded like... Scratching. It was probably just an animal outside, scraping its paw against the ground. There are a few feral cats that lived around our neighborhood, and I guessed it was just another one digging at something that only a cat's superb eyesight could focus in on. That's the explanation I gave my wife. The moment passed, and we returned to watching the TV show that had held our attention a moment earlier. The truth was that I could not have been more wrong. Later that same night, my wife decided to retire early to bed, and I was eventually left alone downstairs in the living room. I'd always been one to stay up late, despite the fact that tonight there didn't seem to be anything else to watch on TV. At least, nothing I felt was worthy of my time. Nothing on Netflix either that piqued my interest, and I'd already watched all the movies in my home collection more than once. So, I just reclined back in my chair and stayed there in the peace and quiet, just soaking it up for a while. That was until I heard the sound again. The scratching from the exact same spot. This time I decided to be more proactive about it and stood up from my chair to investigate. I put on the front porch light, guessing that if there was some small animal out there, that it would certainly be scared off by the sudden explosion of light. Or if not, Or if not that, then when it heard me undo the deadbolt and open the door, it would definitely bolt. Somewhat surprised, I looked down to the area past the side of the porch and saw nothing. Slowly scanning the nearby shrubs, expecting to see the reflection of light in the animal's eyes, I still saw nothing. Like many of the other homes in our neighborhood, our front porch is made of cement. I summarized that that's where I'd heard the noise. Satisfied with finding nothing else, I went back inside and shut the door. I finally decided that that had been enough excitement for one night, and retired to bed myself. I work an early shift for my job, and therefore I'm up before anyone else in my house. That includes my wife and two young kids. I was just finishing up getting ready to walk out the back door when I heard a now familiar noise come from the living room. There was something different this time though. The scratches sounded louder, more vocal than before. They were more persistent. They came again even more rapidly the second time. I felt as if they were demanding my immediate attention. I went out through the front door, being careful to make as little noise as possible. After all, I didn't want to wake either of our kids up this early, 
and leave my wife to deal with the aftermath. I decided to make a couple of rounds encircling the house, attempting to seek out the source of the now persistent scratching. I methodically searched the shrubs, starting in the front and making my way to the back of the house. Still, I saw nothing. Equally puzzled and disappointed, I gave up my search and decided I needed to leave for work to avoid being late. While there, my attention was split, as I found it hard to focus on anything else but the strange, somewhat ominous scratching I'd been hearing. Even more troubling to me now was that I still couldn't identify what was producing it. A few more days passed and the scratching continued. My wife was growing increasingly worried, and the kids refused to go in the basement to play as it was possible to hear the scratching from down there as well. Down in that same corner of the house, under the living room. One time I even went down to listen for myself, and it sounded like whatever was scratching was trying to break through the wall of the foundation itself. With no other ideas, and an increasing dread growing in the back of my mind, I called a local exterminator. I thought it was possible that there was some animal that had somehow made its way inside the walls of our home and had become trapped. If that was the case, I wanted it taken care of before it died, and we'd have to deal with a new shock to our senses. The exterminator arrived about an hour after my somewhat panicked call. Lucky for me, he had an opening in his schedule that morning and was able to fit me in. After asking my wife and I a few questions about the recent occurrences, he inspected the area outside, where we'd heard the scratching. He then walked around the house, appearing to be very attentive to the ground and foundation of the house. After the outside inspection was completed, he asked to see the basement, and then the attic after that. His theory was that there must be a hole somewhere. He said this hole wouldn't have to be very big for an animal to squeeze through, and then it could have gotten stuck somewhere and couldn't find its way back out. After about another hour of searching, the exterminator found me sitting on the front porch. I'm sorry, sorry sir. sir. I can't see any hole or other opening where something could have found its way into your home. And I haven't heard any scratching or any other animal-like noises. Hmm. Well, what else could it be? <laughs> I wish I knew, buddy. Well, if you folks see anything else, just give us a call, okay? Hmm. Thank you for your time. Just as he turned to leave... He stopped mid-step, and slowly turned to face the direction of where we both had heard it, not even bothering to look at me when he spoke. Maybe it's something underground. The next day I contacted our landlord to let her know about what had been happening for the past week. Being a rental property, I couldn't just go tearing up the front yard of our house as I pleased. We lived on a vibrant, busy street, and just the thought of turning it upside down made my stomach turn, thinking of the potential consequences. But I had to know what was going on. I had the feeling deep down that there was more to this than simple animal mischief. I eventually got a hold of the landlord by email, and I was taken aback a bit by her response to my query to further investigate the sounds. She forbid us from doing any changes to the landscape, much less digging down into the yard to look for something that may not even be there. I was immediately suspicious. I gave my wife the bad news. She'd finally decided to leave and take the kids with her to go stay at her dad's place. We lived over in a neighboring town, so I would be alone for at least a few days. As she walked out the door, she gave me a glance. A glance that clearly, 
non-verbally stated, you need to figure this out. So, I made the decision that night. I was going to find out what, if anything, was under my yard. I got up really early the next morning. As luck would have it, it was Saturday, and I had the day off from work. I got dressed quick and grabbed my shovel from the garage. The day was still mirroring the night as darkness still covered everything. Using my phone's flashlight setting to illuminate what I was doing, I inserted the shovel into the ground and began to dig. There was no turning back now. I continued digging for what seemed quite a while, looking up only as the occasional jogger or walker passed by. I brought up another shovel of dirt when I saw something begin to reveal itself to me. It looked white, like the ivory of an elephant's tusks. I dropped the shovel behind me and got down on my hands and knees. I began to dig with my hands furiously. Somehow, I already knew what I'd found. As I pulled it out of the ground, I carefully brushed off more dirt and some bugs that had accumulated inside and around it. It was a child-sized human skull. Soon after that, I found the rest of the body. I called the police when I was finished. My landlords were taken in for questioning. The house and my entire yard became a potential crime scene. The entire town was talking about what I had discovered. Even my wife and I had to sit down at one point with the police and retell our entire story to them. Given the enormity of the situation, my boss was able to give me some time off work until things cooled down. It was all so overwhelming. I didn't want to talk about it with anyone. I was thankful for the time off from my job. I just wanted to be there for my family, to help them get through this. The police conducted an extensive search of the house and yard. Out of all of it, there was only the one body. The body belonged to a young boy who they identified through dental records. I'm withholding his name. Apparently, he had disappeared from a town almost 100 miles away, about 10 years ago, based on missing persons reports. My family and I had only lived in the house for a little over three years now. I never did find out how he died, and honestly, I didn't want to know. No suspect was ever found, and the police had no plausible explanation for the scratching noises we'd been hearing. It just wasn't possible, they said. I find it hard to sleep nowadays. Whenever I close my eyes, in the darkness I see the boy's bony arm reaching up out of its shallow grave and bringing its white fingers across the brick of my house. Again, and again, and again, until there's nothing left but dust. A few months after, things began to die down and life started to resemble something normal. I answered a knock at my front door. Standing there was an elderly man in his mid-seventies. He introduced himself as Arthur, last name withheld. He told me he'd been the previous occupant of the house with his wife until they'd moved out about a year before we'd moved in. Arthur asked me how I was getting along since everything had happened. I said, "Eh, okay, I suppose. As good as could be, considering everything. Oh, that's good to hear, he stated. But before I could say anything else, he looked around nervously, and then asked me another question about something there was no way he could have known about. A detail that the police never released to the media. Tell me, son. When did you first hear the scratching?
Ah, oh, lovely little story, that one. I really enjoyed reading it, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it just as much. Well, the thunder and lightning is still going on outside, and it's quite a relief. It's been 35 degrees here today, and, oh, the air has cooled down. Well, that's enough for me for tonight. You know what? I'll be back again with you real soon. If you're new to the channel, please join the conversation below. We do like to have a good chit-chat after the videos, and I'm always there to answer any questions you may have. Well, back again soon. But for now, good night and sweet dreams. Ha 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 ha.